Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Bite Plugin with QDOT. It has been a few months since the Teledildonics 101 series, and I am ready to show off some new stupid projects that I've had. Uh, now, as you can tell, I'm enjoying the plague just like everyone else. Got my plug beard going on here, and it's meant lots and lots of time to get work done. So today, I'd like to show off uh, a project that I've been working on for, oh, about the past 48 hours or so that just kind of came up for fun but has ended up being really really interesting so you can probably see on the bottom corner of your screen i have a switch right here want to know why i have a switch right here because the ghr works with consoles now well, or console, singular. Uh, we'll get to console in a bit. But uh, yeah, I have just uh, posted a proof of concept of something I'm calling the console game haptics router. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, the game haptics router is a piece of software for Windows that uh, I created a few years ago, uh, built on top of a library that I make called Buttplug. Buttplug allows you to access um, couple hundred different sex toys in a fairly simple way so that if you want to write software that controls sex toys, you can do it with a minimal amount of code, but the maximal amount of sex toy coverage. So what the game Haptics Router does is it will hook into the code of a game and allow you to reroute rumble from controller to a sex toy. Now, the problem with the game Haptics Router is it only works on Windows PC games. And there's all of these consoles out there, Xbox, PlayStation, um, Switch, Ouya, Jaguar, Saturn, 3DO, you name it. Um, and quite a few of these things have rumble on them. So the question has become, okay, if I don't have a PC or I don't really play PC games, but I play a lot of console games, can I still use the GHR? And the answer so far has been no. But uh, I spent a little while with some of the controllers this uh uh, this weekend and figured out a few things about Bluetooth. Uh, also spent a ton of time uh, digging through open source projects like uh, GIMX, G-I-M-X, which is a really interesting project for rerouting control from, say, PC wheels to your PlayStation 4 or Xbox, or allows you to use mouse and keyboard with those. There's also a piece of hardware called the Titan 2 that allows you to do that. Uh, and then there's other Joy-Con projects, uh, Joy Control, which is a Python project, Joy Control RS, which is the Rust version of it, which is something I've been working with here um, to build the software. So all sorts of really interesting open source stuff. I have links to all of those in the GitHub for the CGHR, which I'll have in the description to this video. So without further ado, let's actually take a look at how you work with the Game Haptics router on a console. So first off we will pull up my desktop here okay so um the first thing that the game haptics router on a console requires is a linux box and for this i'm going to be using just basically a raspberry pi now obviously this one isn't hooked up the one i'm going to be using is off screen uh but you'll need a raspberry pi and then you'll actually need two different Bluetooth radios. So you need two Bluetooth phones. And that's because of how the game Haptics Router works on consoles. Now, when we're working on a Windows PC, I can just like hook into the game software that's running on the PC. It's an all software solution. I can't do that on a console without modding. And once you have to mod a console to do something, you've massively reduced the amount of people that can use whatever you're doing. Because not everyone's really going to want to like jailbreak and homebrew their cons. But um, so what I'm looking to do is how do we do this in a way that is completely external to modifying the console or any of the, the software on the console? And so the way this works is we do a man in the middle attack on the controller and the console. So what will happen here is usually like with a switch, for instance, you'll take your um, like I've got a pro controller here that I'll be using for this demo. And when you press certain buttons on the pro controller, it pairs to the switch. Now, what we're going to do instead is whenever we press the buttons on the pro controller, it's going to match. It's going to uh, pair to this uh, Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi is going to make itself look like the controller. And then we'll hook that up to the switch. 
So it ends up being controller Raspberry Pi switch versus just controller switch. And what we can do from there is once we have our six toys, um, then we can also control those for the Raspberry Pi. So what'll happen is like, you'll be playing a game with all this hooked up and the switch will tell your controller to rumble. We'll see that because the switch is actually going to tell the Raspberry Pi, which is going to tell the controller. And we can take that information and send it to your plug. Awesome. So let's take a look at what this looks like in software right now. And the thing I should really warn about, this is not quality software at the moment. This is a proof of concept. It barely works. It disconnects constantly. Um, I have a ton of problems with it, but really, I'm just so excited about this idea that I want to throw it out there. And if people want to come in and improve on it, that'd be great. Uh, I certainly plan on making my own improvements. I'd actually like to make a little, um, image for Raspberry Pis so you could just boot it up and have it appear on a network, go to a web page, set up like what buttons and vibrations and stuff you want routed to your toy. Um, and than just be able to use it. But that's a long way away right now. Um, for now, I just kind of want to show this off and show you how to actually have um, sex toys work with uh, Animal Crossing. So if I bring up my terminal here, um, we will go ahead and run the program and I'll just kind of go through what running it looks like at the moment. There's a lot of steps involved. So we'll run it, and the first thing it's going to do is scan for the controller. So at that point, we're going to need to hit the top button, which is actually turns on Bluetooth rescanning. So you can see it is scanning now. The program found it, and now it is asking me to go to the change uh, grip and order uh, menu on the console. And that's because when you do this, the console starts its discovery mode. So the console is now looking for the controller, but it will find the Raspberry Pi that's over here, as you can see right there. Now, there's a whole bunch of things scrolling by, but you can also see that uh, butt plug started and it found the Levin's Hush, the butt plug over here. So if I leave this now, see, now I can actually use the controller. And one thing you're gonna notice, it is laggy. Um, there is some real serious lag in the system right now. But if I come out here and load up my shovel and dig myself a hole, we have vibration. And if I cover that hole up, oh, and the program died. Um, so, like I said, this happens pretty often. Let me get this reset and I can show you a little bit more. Okay, we are back. So now I can cover up the hole I just made and there we go. Um, and if I come over here and try fishing, Of course, if I run, I'm going to scare the fish off, but okay. So, oh, another, God damn it. Okay, well, as you can see, even if the fish are running, oh, okay, the fish are fucking with me. Um, anyway, oh, God damn it. Well, even when fishing like this is annoying, now it's fun because it's vibrating the butt plug whenever I cast. Oh, come the fuck on. I'm on goddamn stream and I get, get the fish. Um, okay, maybe it'll see me. Maybe if I just wait, maybe. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, there we go. See, now this is the way that you fish. So I'm probably going to miss the fish because of the input lag on us right now. <laughs> And there you go, butt plug fishing. And, but of course I got a fucking Crucian carp because all I ever fucking get is fucking carps and fucking horse mackerels and oh God. Anyways, um, as you can tell, I've barely decorated my island because I've been too busy doing stupid stunts like this. Um, so you can also chop trees. 
Um, so just in case you have a getting stung by a wasp fetish, now you can really take it to the next level. Okay, and there's some other bugs too where it might just get stuck sometimes. But maybe that's a good thing. Anyways, so that's a quick overview of how the toys work with Animal Crossing. Now, this program will work with basically any Switch game. I'm just showing Animal Crossing because fucking of course I'm going to show Animal Crossing, but um, I'll show another demo here later. Now, one of the interesting questions, though, is multiplayer. So can we actually have teledildonics in Animal Crossing? Let's see. Now, one of the biggest problems we have with Animal Crossing and the console VHR is teledildonics. Animal Crossing is a multiplayer game, but in order to be teledildonics, you need to have someone else triggering your vibration. So how do you get someone else to trigger vibration on your controller when they are on your island or you are on their island? This is a surprisingly difficult thing to do. So I have someone on my island right now, and I would like to thank Kieran for um, being my uh, test model here. And we're going to do a few things just to show you like, what interaction looks like and how you can try to figure out to at least have teledildonics in Animal Crossing. Though, like I said, it takes some work. So I've got uh, everything set up here. And first off, let's go through a few different interactions you might see in uh, Animal Crossing when you have someone over. Um, so first off, there are reactions, of course, and emotes. And someone can do that, but unfortunately, it's not really going to do much, as you can see. Like, there's no vibration pretty much anywhere. So that's kind of a no-go. So what about hitting people with things? Um, so, of course, you've got shovels, you've got axes, you've got nets. And when you do things with these, they normally do something and they'll make your controller vibrate. But, yeah, if I get whopped with a net a whole bunch or, um, say, the axe or something like that, uh, I can also try being axe murdered by a friend. And once again, absolutely nothing happens here. They bounce off, but there's no real vibration or anything else happening on my end. So teledildonics here in a real-time sense is going to be very, very difficult to pull off. However, there is one thing we can do that someone else controls, and that would be traps. Okay, so now we have a trap set up here, and everything is hooked up. And if I put up my fishing rod here and walk forward, look at that. And it goes until you uh, actually get out of the trap there. So it's pretty wild. So you either have no teledildonics at all or basically just whapping the orgasm button until someone's done. So traps are pretty effective. Um, now, the one thing about this is this is not real-time synchronous teledildonics. This is not someone actually controlling your device uh, in a real-time way. They have to set a trap and you have to walk into it. And... You can totally do that, and that works as little dogs. They can set up patterns of traps for you or something like that. And there's an interesting power dynamic to it that I'm going to guess the, uh, well, I mean, no, the, the Animal Crossing developers probably planned for this and for me and for everything, because that's, I mean, you've seen some of the other stuff in this game if you've watched the Reddit or something like that. So... Maybe they did plan for Teledildonics, and maybe this is the way that's supposed to be done. But, um, yeah, um, trap Teledildonics in Animal Crossing. There you go. Um, let's see what happens when we play Mario, because there's a lot of vibration in Mario. As you can see, there's my hush over there, and every time he lands, basically, it will vibrate. 
So, yeah, really any game with Rumble, this will work on. It will not work well right now. This is incredibly difficult to control because it loses a lot of packets and stuff. There's a lot of work to be done here. But still, the uh, idea is there. So I'm pretty happy with where this is right now, and I can't wait to see where it... Jesus. Can't wait to see where it ends up going. So there we go. That is the console game haptics router, or at least the first prototype of it. I am so excited about this because there is just so much potential for what we can do with console games. Uh, can't wait to get this uh, into the hands of like cam models and stuff so they can start playing with the stuff uh, in shows and whatnot. It's really, really exciting. The source code, what little of it there is, is up on GitHub right now. And if you check the description, there is a link to the repo. Um, one of the big questions is, of course, going to be, where is Xbox? Where is PlayStation 4? So PlayStation 4 can use basically the same method I used on the Switch, but it has some encryption in it that is not a huge deal. Um, projects, like I mentioned earlier, like uh, uh, GimX, have already taken care of this, but it's still tricky. So that's something I'm working on right now. Also looking at Xbox, which has both Wi-Fi direct control for its ages of controllers so far, and then fairly recently Bluetooth controllers. So there's a lot of hardware work to do. There's a lot of interaction work to do, but this is a great start. And I am super excited about this. So really, if you have any questions or you have any ideas for what you would like to do with this if you've played with the other game haptics router and you have comments on that please leave some feedback in the comments i would love to hear from you and of course if you're interested in supporting the project and getting more of this information up front uh please join my patreon uh i'm at patreon.com slash q dot q d o t and that's pretty much it for today so thanks for joining me and until next time keep butt plugging